Good morning, a new day. I'm here at Ski Hill, just absolutely enjoying the wildflowers. You know, God provides such great beauty for us, and He is also blessed us with great speakers here at a new day church and we got one coming up today that you don't want to miss michelle is going to bring a great message we're going to have some awesome worship it's going to be good so stay tuned you got a great thing coming
by heartbreak Let your presence meet us there When the pain seems overwhelming We hold on to you When the streets are torn by chaos We will be your hands and feet When the darkness brings division May we be your light Cause we know our world needs Jesus We know that our world needs freedom So give us eyes to see the hurting and the broken And let our lives align with every word you say When the nations hate from violence We will be your blessed face When the headlines scream injustice May we shout your name
This heart needs healing So for my needs I lift this prayer to you, my Savior For my life and for the world You're the answer, Jesus If you're lonely, longing for someone to hear you If your burdens feel like more than you can bear If you're searching for a place to just be honest Come just as you are if you're tired of just hoping for an answer If you're wishing you could let your God come down If you feel like you can hold it all together Come just as you are There's no need Hiding at the Father's house, you met with open arms, and He gives grace without condition as you are with nothing else, just come. There is space for everyone who feels unworthy A place for those who never felt at home Where you don't have to wonder if you're wanted Come just as you are There's a hope
Maybe you have never trusted him at all They saved it here to wrestle with your questions Come just as you are Church family, it's good to see you. Good, uh, it's good that you got to tune in here for our worship service. The music was just incredible. But now this is the next part of our service. Here I am on a Sunday morning, enjoying my nice cup of coffee, and I thought to myself, a Bible verse that came to mind: "Taste and see that the Lord is good." Now, what does a good cup of coffee have to do with our church service and that Bible verse? Well, let me just make things a couple clear. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Because what is God doing? He's doing a lot of good things in our lives, right? He's doing a lot of good things in your home, your school, your job, our communities. And of course, that's a lot of investment in where we are in life. So, you take the word investment and you put that for our church because not only is God doing all good works in our communities and all that stuff but it's also important of what he's doing in our church New Day Church so investment just a few minutes ago you saw how the Giveify app works it's so easy to do it on your computer or your phone at a newdaychurch.com and the Giveify app section is right there. So you just click on it and you just give your donations. So we thank you for your generosity because we know that as you taste and see that the Lord is good. So your generosity, your giving, your thankfulness, and your uh, hospitality for New Day Church. We thank you for that and all that you do. And we are so blessed that you are part of our family. So now as we go forward, into our service. We are so blessed because we have a powerful message coming your way. Michelle Gerges is bringing the word. So sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee because you don't want to miss this message. So anyway, I'll see you soon. God bless.
morning everyone this is a new day and I am Michelle Gerges and I am so happy and honored to be bringing you God's Word this morning and uh, another message that uh, he put in my heart I'm at the beautiful Iverson Spit on Kameno Island and you might hear a lot of chatter in the background because the tide is going out and we have seagulls. Uh, we actually have a bunch of bald eagles uh, that are out here and some blue herons and they're all competing for food. So uh, stick with me. I'm not going to be uh, too long this morning. I want to talk to you about a topic um, and we have entitled it, I Really Hate Religion. I know that sounds weird, but I'm going to give you some good reasons um, why religion does not lead where we want to go. We want relationship. We want relationship with Jesus Christ. Because in the Bible, we were never called to be religious. We kind of throw that term around. Um, in our society that there are religious people and non-religious people. Um, but the, the word religion has a lot of man-made properties to it. And we're going to talk about that. We are called to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Religion makes us feel obligated and guilty. But relationship drives us closer to our Heavenly Father. And I'm going to give just a, a little background about myself and, and how I grew up, um, just so that maybe you can relate a little bit. Um, I grew up on kind of the outside um, of the Catholic Church, big Italian family. Um, we were kept, my dad's side was Catholic, and every once in a while we would go to church and I would be excited about the prospect of going to church, but then once we got there, I didn't understand anything as a child. I didn't understand all the rituals and all the list of things that my parents told me we could do and we could not do in church. And then the priest would come up and speak and I didn't understand what he said. I wanted that connection in my spirit but I had nothing to connect to because I didn't understand it. To me, it was just a, a set of rules and regulations. So um, as time went on, I got invited by a neighbor um, to a Christian church. And as soon as the music started playing and we were able to stand up and clap and engage in the worship, I, my soul immediately had a connection as a young person. I might have been about 11, 12 years old at this time. And I remember just there was something stirring in me. And I was excited to be there. I didn't know what it was, but there was something. And then the pastor, preacher, um, whatever he was called in that church, got up and spoke. And his words came alive to me. I understood what he was talking about. He spoke plain English. Um, so I had a few experiences with that and seeds were planted in my heart and in my soul. But like most people, the teenage years come and um, I was drawn and pulled in every direction away from God, away from my values. Um, and that was a desert time um, away from everything. And then when I was about 17 years old, I had a high school friend invite me to a Bible study. And that's where the relationship was completed. She introduced me to the person, the man of Jesus Christ. And she told me what Jesus had done for me and that he was willing to leave his throne in heaven and come to this earth, be born a baby and a man and walk this earth. And then he was willing to take on my sin, mine personally, and go to the cross and die for me so that there would be a bridge and I could be united with my heavenly father. Wow, with the seeds that had already been planted, that message just came alive to me. And I ran forward. I wanted that. I wanted that relationship. I didn't want to go into a church and have rules and regulations and, and traditions that I didn't understand. 
I wanted to know the person of Jesus Christ. And she introduced me to him. And there was no turning back from that point. Major change took place inside of me without me trying. I didn't have a set of rules or I'm going to change this and I'm going to try to be a better person. Just the things that were not of God began to fall off of me. I wasn't interested anymore. I just didn't want to do those things. And the the good, um, wholesome things of God that produce fruit and produce good things in our life, that was easy to do. And my actually, my transformation was so huge that my parents came to church because they thought I was involved in some cult because it was so life-changing. Um, so I think that says a lot for it. So I will get into uh, the message, but on a side note, um, somewhere along the line, a little bit later, Ted came to know the Lord in the same way that I did, my husband. And both of us at different times led our parents to the Lord. And all four of our parents are gone now. And we have the confidence, we have the hope that they are in heaven sitting on next to Jesus. And that just um, swells our hearts because that's our purpose in this life is to lead souls to Jesus. And I can tell you, religion does not do that because religion is empty. Without a relationship with Jesus Christ, religion is empty. So um, Jesus was always battling with the religious leaders of his time. He calls us to be a new creation in him. Our old selves are buried at the cross. We are to renew our minds in godliness. Religion does not produce lasting change, but relationship does. Jesus calls us to be intimate with him. That's what keeps us coming back, is that we have that intimate relationship with him. We talk to him. We um, tell him what is going on in our lives. We ask for him to help us in the simplest things. When we know him, we will want to draw closer to him and abide in him. Religion is man-made but relationship is life-changing. <laughs> I'm going to read 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone, the new is here. That's how we know we're in a relationship because you won't have to work for the old things to fall off. They just will because it's... Um, it transforms us and when we um, seek to be closer to God those things fall off we don't feel deprived I was 17 when I became a believer I didn't feel like I was missing out on anything I actually had a lot more fun being a Christian Christ makes us a new creation how we used to think and believe is now gone and our minds are renewed through Jesus so that we have a biblical worldview now. We don't believe the way the world does. That's our old self. All the things we were raised in, well, you know, we just do this because, and um, just the, the different politics, the different things we believe in, those fall off and the new comes. And Jesus gives us a biblical worldview to live by. And it makes it very simple. How the world thinks is always changing with every new whim and agenda. Notice that. Everything comes in waves that comes through the mainstream media. That this is popular now or this is not popular. Um, this is right now. This is wrong. Think about how exhausting that is to base everything on whim and agenda versus God's word. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's not about being old fashioned. It's about the biblical scripture that says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. These are time tested principles that work. Not let's just take a stab that 
oh, um, this is fashionable now. This is okay. Um, what, whatever it is, all the different him slash she, how we identify ourselves, all the binary issues, all the, um, you know, young people not knowing what they are. That's, that's all confusion and the enemy and chaos. It is not the truth of the Bible. We're born male and female. It's very simple. That's how we reproduce. We need a man and a woman to reproduce. The disciples identified themselves as Jesus's followers rather than identifying themselves as any type of religion. Completely trusting in God to get us through each day and believing that he is our sustainer is the way to have a relationship with him. <clears throat> Attending church does not automati automatically bring us in a relationship with Jesus. There are a lot of lost, broken, empty people that have a form of godliness, but it has no power because they haven't been changed. Just because you go to church on Sunday, but if nothing takes place in your spirit, in your soul, that's, that changes you, that stirs you, then your religion is powerless. What are we doing Monday through Saturday to cultivate that relationship with Jesus? He should be part of our everyday lives. And we also should be thinking of sharing the good news with other people, not holding that back. If you see, I'm looking out at this water. If I see someone drowning out there, I'm not gonna say, oh nice, have a good day. I, I hope all goes well for you. No, I'm gonna throw myself in that water and I'm gonna go try to save them. It's the same thing with our souls. When we have a relationship, we surrender our heart and our life to Jesus. Relationship produces change in us. It has to. It has to produce change. A great way to understand the difference between religion and relationship is this. Religion is us trying to reach up to God by showing God how many rules we can live out. Like, oh, I'm being so good today, God. Look, I haven't messed up. I haven't done anything wrong. He's not interested in that. If he was interested in that, he wouldn't have called King David a man after his own heart. A man that committed adultery and a man that murdered was a man after his own heart. So he is definitely more interested in our heart and our relationship with him. Not how many rules we can follow, not how good we can be because we will always fall short. That's why we need a savior. That's why religion is powerless on its own. It's a defeating way to live, to try to live by rules, because you can never be perfect. It's always a struggle. God knew we couldn't live out and follow the rules. He did it for us through Jesus. I'm gonna read 2 Timothy 3, one through five. a very powerful scripture, so stick with me for these few verses. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And this is the part that defines the difference between religion and relationship. Having a form of godliness but denying its power have nothing to do with such people. So a couple things. This is a warning to us that it's a sign of the last days. And I know we can say, well, some of this has been happening for a long time. 
But if you really take a good hard look at today, June 2nd, whatever day it is, 2022, you will know that this, some of these things are worse than ever. And by knowing and understanding that this is part of the last days and this was predicted, we were told these things were gonna happen, is we can have peace. We can draw near to Jesus and know he's in control. He said these things were coming. We don't need to panic. We don't need, um, you know, uh, when, when COVID first happened, everybody was gobbling up toilet paper, like panicking and living in fear. And now everybody's, you know, getting gas because they're afraid of what can happen. You know what? Jesus had us last year. He had us yesterday. He has us today and he's going to have us in the future. So we don't have to worry. We don't have to panic. We know what's coming and we know we're on the winning team. We're on the winning side. So rest in that and don't get all worked up about all these terrible things because it's leading eventually to a glorious place. So hold tight. Matthew 23, 1 through 11 is a warning against hypocrisy. And I'm going to read that. Let's see if I can get there. It's a little bit long, um, but it really uh, ties into the message I'm speaking. So I'm going to read it. Matthew 23, 1 through 11. Then Jesus said to the crowds and his disciples, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So you must be careful to do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. That's the problem with religion. They tie up heavy, cumbersome loads and put them on other people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Everything they do is done for people to see. This is what we guard against with religion. They make their phylacteries wide and the tassels on their garments long. They love the place of honor at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogues. They love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and be called rabbi by others. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, big T, capital T, one teacher, Jesus, and you are all brothers. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father and he is in heaven. And this is not talking about calling your dad an earthly dad. It's, it's calling someone in the position um, of power, calling them father. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Jesus was the greatest of them all. He was the Son of God, yet he chose to be a servant. So we live by that example. The first will be last, and the last will be first. That is true religion. That is true relationship with Jesus. John 14, 6. I'm going to read that. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. People talk about and say that, you know, Christians are narrow-minded and not all of life is black and white, it's gray. Well, here's our example, Jesus Christ himself. There is nothing more narrow-minded than this, but it does not change that it's the truth. People don't like it. Their flesh doesn't like it. They want to be able to say, oh, well, if I'm a good person and I believe in a higher power, all religions lead to God and lead to heaven. <clears throat> Lie. That is not the truth. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. 
That is the truth. And it's a beautiful truth because he's saying the only way to the father is through him. And he led by example. He was crucified on a cross and gave his life for us. Who does that? Maybe besides a parent doing it for their own child. There's nobody else on this earth. The American soldier, I guess I can say that also, is willing to give his life for his brother, for others. But Jesus led by example. He was the first to put the cross on his back and march to be nailed on it, to be crucified on it for us. So he's allowed to say, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and there's no way to the Father except by me. The world tells us all religions lead to God in heaven. That is not true. It's a lie. There is only one way to the Father. James 2.10. I'm going to read that. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. That's why we need a savior. That's why religion doesn't work because we cannot keep the law. Go back in the Old Testament and read through Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy and some of those chapters and try to just do one tenth of all the rules and regulations back then. We can't do it. And if we don't do all of them, then we might as well have done none of them. And that is why, again, we need a savior because we cannot keep all the rules and regulations. If we wanna live by the law and not by grace, then we get to keep every part of the law. We don't get to pick and choose what we keep. Proverbs 14, 12. I'm going to read that. There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. So all of the religions out there, all of the ways of thinking that are not based on the Bible, the truth, they appear to be right but they all lead to death. And when it says death, it means eternal death. Of course, we're all gonna physically die, but that's not the end. There is eternity. There's eternity in heaven and there's eternity in hell. That is it. There's no limbo. There's no being, having a reincarnation and, and having a second chance. There's not. So I would rather base my truth on the time-tested Bible and not what Michelle Gerges feels is right because the Proverbs warn us against that. There is a way that appears right, but in the end it leads to death. There's our warning right there. Every person has their own way they think is right, but apart from Jesus, all of these lead to death. There is only one truth. The world wants everything to be gray with no absolutes because that's easier. Then we can fit our own truth in between all of those gray areas. But most everything is black and white. That's just how it is. Acts 17, 23 through 28. And I'm going to close with this. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth. And he does not live in temples or churches or synagogues built by human hands and he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything rather he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else from one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth 
and he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. So that was his purpose. He set it all up so that we would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him. That's been his plan from the beginning. He wants a relationship with us. That's why he created us. And it says, though he is not far from any one of us. So don't believe the lie that God is so far away and he can't help you and he can't fix you and he can't change you. That is not true. If you're stuck, perhaps ask yourself, are you relying more on religion and going through the motions versus a, a father, child, Abba, father, daddy relationship with him? And if you didn't have a good earthly father, it's okay because he shows us how to have that father, daughter, father, son relationship with him. For in him, we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. So God does not live in churches or any building. Yes, it's nice to have church, but he is not confined to a building. He lives in the human heart. Read the book of Acts and that will be made all so clear to you that he lived in each one of their hearts and that's how they carried the gospel, the good news forward was because it resided in their heart. We are not bound by a building. We are the church. We are. His people are the church. We carry Jesus in our hearts everywhere we go. So don't be confined and bound to only religion and just going to church on Sunday, going through the motions of well, I have to read a few verses a day to be a good Christian. I need to go through the motions of praying. Treat it as a relationship, like with your significant other, with your spouse, with your boyfriend or girlfriend, with your best friend, with your child. You want to have that relationship where you talk to that person and you express yourself to that person and you have a relationship with that person. So I am going to close up, take what you've heard today and run with it and don't be stuck to a, a, a building or any denomination or any particular type of religion. Pursue a relationship with Jesus Christ. You won't regret it. God bless. Did I mention I hate religion? I'm going to go take a walk and spend some time with Jesus. Well, hello, a new day church. It's announcement time. Tuesday, 7 p.m. We have take your back. Take Back Your Life. You don't want to miss it. It is absolutely awesome. We are digging into God's Word and we're praying together and it's just a really great time. Um, it's an hour. It goes by so fast and you get so filled. So join us then Wednesday 7 p.m. We also have prayer. Prayer at the Gerges house and God is moving mountains. So if you want to be part of that, join us. You can join us online. You can come on over. Either way, you can join us and God can take care of your needs. And then Sunday, 10 a.m., of course, we have church service, which you've joined us just now. And it's going to be again next week at the same time. And Cindy is going to bring an amazing word. So don't miss it. She's so great. And then, of course, last but not least, we have an in-person gathering coming up at Wilcox Park, 1 o'clock at June 12th, on, excuse me, on June 12th. We're going to get together. It's an in-person. Everybody's going to have fun. We're going to have games and food and 
It's going to be great. So don't miss it. Invite your friends, tell your family. And then last but not least, Faith in the Fields. This is a really important get together because Dan Yaden needs our support. So if you can join us, it's going to be a dinner at five o'clock on July 12th at Faith in the Fields. So sign up and we'll see you there. All right, church, you have a great Sunday and we love you so much. Bye-bye.